morning everybody and welcome to the football philosophy channel and the uh the big day is here it's the manchester derby today 4 30 kickoff uh live on sky uh obviously from the etihad it's an away game for united today not that that matters uh, it shouldn't matter there's no fans there um but it's a it's a massive game city are going for this record uh, it's a massive game for us we need we need we need to get a decent result. A decent result in this game would be a draw. We weren't over the moon with a draw at Chelsea last week, although personally I thought that was fine. We were six points in front of Chelsea and we remained six points in front of them. I don't think we've got any... We haven't got any chance of catching City in the league. We don't need to beat them for that reason. It'd be nice to beat them, to cement our place in the top four, uh, to overlay, overtake Leicester, by the way. Uh, Leicester had... Leicester had a late winner, a very lucky late winner. I thought Brighton played some great stuff. I'm going to I'm going to cover uh, yesterday's game shortly, um, but I thought Brighton were very unlucky again. But Leicester have gone two points ahead of us. I'm not overly concerned about that. There's you know there's plenty of time left when there's only a point or two between you. Some of the teams who have got five, six, seven, eight points uh, uh, to make up on whoever they're looking at are thinking they've got time. So to be two points behind Leicester or one point if we can nick a draw tomorrow uh, is no problem. We should we shouldn't be worrying about it. But apart from that, it'd be nice to finish second. Of course it would. You want to finish as as high as you can. But let's be honest, if you can't win it. The most important thing really is to finish in the top four. Uh, so I, I, I'm not too concerned about Leicester. We, we've got to try and finish above them. Of course we have. Uh, but I'm not worried about overtaking them today. You know, it doesn't matter today. If we can if we can nick a point, be a point behind them, I'll be quite happy with it. Um, no extra news from the, from the United camp. Um, the rumours the other day that I mentioned on the show about Marcus Rashford's uh, 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 shoulder injury. Nothing, nothing's come to the fore. Nothing's been said about that. It's looking like he's going to be fit to play. Uh, four players have been mentioned, as we said the other day, that, that that are out injured who may be fit. Paul Pogba, Anthony Martial, Mata and Van der Beek. They're hoping for two of those four to be fit. I don't know if they know which two specifically, by the way. But it has been said that they're hoping that two of those four might make the bench uh, or might be fit. It doesn't necessarily mean they're on the bench. I suppose there's a chance Martial or Pogba might, might start if they fit. But... Uh, um, they have said that they're hoping that two of the four might be fit. As I said, don't know if they know which two they're thinking of. It fascinates me, by the way, that we've got so many players playing virtually every game and Van der Beek and Mata hardly ever kick a ball. And of late, even Martial uh, hasn't kicked a ball and yet three of the four players that are injured are, are those three players who, who hardly ever play. Fascinates me that. It really is strange. Um, but there you go. The Manchester Evening News have predicted a team the team they've predicted is Henderson in goal, Juan Basaka, Lindelof, Maguire, and Shaw. I think that those are all correct. Obviously, David de Gea is in Spain. We've said that uh, on a, on the show yeah, yesterday. He's um he's, obviously his, his girlfriend has given birth to his first child, and good luck to them. So David de Gea is in Spain. Henderson so will de will definitely start in goal. Juan Basaka, Lindelof, Maguire, and Shaw. They've gone with McTominay and Fred. I'm hoping Matic gets a start after his performance the other night. I thought he was our best player the other night. Surely Oli can see that, but the evening news are saying McTominay and Fred. They're saying Bruno at number 10, and they're saying Dan James, Cavani and Rashford. So it's similar to the other night, except James is in for Greenwood in, in their opinion. Uh, when Marcus is going to get a rest is beyond me. He deserves a rest. He plays every match. You know, let's be honest, I, 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 he was the player in focus the other night. They never use the word dropped these days. You know, players, they get a rest when, they, when they're injured. They get a rest when they're suspended. Uh, they do get rested occasionally. And they always use the phrase rested or we rotate in the team. They never say dropped. But uh, the way Marcus played at Crystal Palace, you know, he deserves to be left out of the team for his performance. He deserves a rest for the amount of football that he's played. There's rumours about a shoulder injury. There's that many things. So if Marcus does play against City, I don't know when he, he will ever he will ever get a rest. I really don't. Um, I would have Dan James, Cavani and Martial as my top three. Your two wide men in this game today are going to be playing more or less in midfield. They're not going to be up top. They're going to be more or less in midfield. It's going to be like a 4-5-1, I think, or a 4-4-1-1. Uh, 
So uh, I would prefer James and Martial anyway. So uh, so that's that. Let's see what happens. Like I say, I'd be more than happy to take a point. I watched a bit of football yesterday. I'll just go through them in order. Burnley played Arsenal. Obama Yang put Arsenal up early doors, first two or three minutes. Uh, a crazy equaliser for, for Chris Wood, the uh, Burnley striker. Uh, the, the keeper played played it out to, to Zaka, who was in his own penalty area. I'm sure these teams by now they should they, they should be thinking about telling the keepers you know don't pass it to someone who's in your own box i'd just get it up the field and get out so so zaka receives the ball inside his own box tries to pass a square ball to his full back uh, it's wood who's just standing there uh, the keeper's in his goal but he's to the left of his goal and the, the net's virtually empty and it just bounces off wood and, and goes into the virtually empty net so that was burnley's equalizer it finished one one uh, that's put Arsenal onto 38 points. Chelsea are on 47 points in fourth place. So they're nine points behind them. If they could have won, gone and won that game, or if they could have nicked it, they probably deserved to nick it in the end. They were all over Burnley at the end. Uh, they also had a VAR thing, to over, uh, you know, a penalty overturned. Peters, the uh, the Burnley left back who was on as a sub, it hit him on the shoulder and then hit the bar. Uh, the ref gave a red card and a penalty, but the VAR saw fit to overturn it. It was probably the right decision. Uh, but they also hit the post in the last minute. They had one kicked off the line or the last couple of minutes. So they could easily nick it, but they didn't. So, it's, you know, if, they, if it had moved them onto 40 points and they were seven points behind Chelsea, I think they would have been eyeing that fourth spot. But I think it might be a little bit beyond them now. Uh, the next game after that yesterday, Southampton won 2-0 at Sheffield United. And that was an important three points for them near the bottom. They've not won. They haven't won a game in the last nine in the league up to yesterday, Chef, uh, uh, Southampton. Uh, they had uh, lost eight and drawn one of the last nine. Uh, they got a penalty yesterday. Ward Prowse took the penalty and Shea Adams scored a cracker from just outside the box. Uh, I wonder if Ralph Hassenhutl could ever have imagined when they beat Liverpool, the last time they won, it was against Liverpool. And uh, I remember putting a tweet out how, how much I enjoyed uh, the passion that he showed, uh, the emotion that he showed. He sank to his knees. I'm pretty sure he was shedding a tear when they beat Liverpool. He obviously cons you know, considers himself to be the manager of a small club, playing against a team that are the champions of England, that the season before that were the champions of Europe. And uh, to, beat, to beat Liverpool was a fantastic achievement. He was obviously over the moon. Um, but who could have envisaged that they wouldn't win one of the next nine? And not only that, and I'm sure this doesn't take anything away from his achievement, but since that day, Liverpool can hardly win a game either. Uh, it's just I just find it all a little bit strange. But the three points for Southampton, obviously being on such a run, they made a really good start to the season, but being on such a run, teams at the bottom had crept up on them. You know, they were only on 30 points before yesterday's game. So... Um, now with those with those three points, they are now uh, ten points clear of Fulham. It, it were obviously third bottom, uh, so you know seven points was a bit, you know, not not much of a gap, but ten points now. I wouldn't say I wouldn't say they safe now with that amount, but I think they will. You know, they, they they will be they would have been looking over the shoulder, but now they'll be breathing a lot more easily. They probably only need another three or four points from all the rest of the games to be to be absolutely certain I'm sure of that the 5.30 game uh, Villa nil, Wolves nil. Um, not a lot to write home about they hit the, hit the woodwork twice in the first half Villa uh, they're still without Jack Grealish injured Ollie Watkins uh, Ollie Watkins hit a cracker uh, a lot of people who, who, who are regular watchers will know that I always say I wouldn't want my players shooting unless they're within I, I preferably within the box, but certainly within that first shade of grass. If you, if, when you look at the cut of, cut of the grass on the field, uh, the first shade of grass is about six. Well, they're all about six yards or six meters wide. If you're outside that first shade of grass, I'd be saying to my strikers or players, I don't want you shooting from there. He had a shot from there. He was only halfway into that second shade. And uh, it was a great effort. It was a thunderous effort. It beat the keeper and it hit the bar. Uh, if I was his manager, I wouldn't be telling him off. It was a great effort. I'd say, unlucky, well well done. But I would still be saying to him, you've not scored. 
you know, he still didn't score as great an effort as it was. It really is difficult scoring from those distances. That was the 5.30 game. The best game of the day, without any shadow of a doubt, was the was the Brighton-Leicester game. I've just mentioned that. Leicester had a, had a late winner. They scored a, uh, Brighton played some great football. Brighton deserved something out of it. I like watching Brighton. I've watched quite a few games. Uh, Lallana got a start. Doesn't always start, and he took his. He took, scored the goal. Took it really well. Uh, they had another good chance to go two 0 up and didn't take it. Uh, and then in the second half, Leicester got more to grips with it. Uh, Tielemans played a pass through to Ian uh, which uh, which Alan Smith in commentary uh, described as a world class pass, and it was a brilliant ball. And Ian Acho finished it beautifully as well. And then. The keeper who I'm very impressed with, and very it's there's no hiding place when you're the keeper. I, I I'm still you know this is one mistake. You, you, we sometimes speak about United's keepers making mistakes and how often they can get away with a mistake. This keeper at Brighton, Sanchez, I really fancy him. He looks the part, uh, but then suddenly he gets caught under a, under a corner kick. Uh, 88 minutes gone, and uh, flaps at it, misses it. And uh, Amati, the uh, the Leicester defender at the back post, heads it into the empty net. Felt sorry for Graham Potter, who really did. And that's what's put Leicester, that, that slip has put Leicester two points ahead of United as we speak. Um, but uh, Brighton, they I'm going to speak about the table uh, shortly at the bottom of the table. But um, they've, they've been dropping some points just recently. With, you know, late goal against... Uh, Crystal Palace was an injury time winner and then this, an 88th minute winner. Just these single points would just make a hell of a difference. Uh, as I've said, I like watching them. A couple of players that really take me. I like Ben White, the centre-back. I like him in a big way. And I love watching Yves Bissouma, the uh, midfield player. Keeps it ticking along. Gets it, gives it, intercepts it, you know knows when the first pass is important, knows if he needs to take a touch, which just gives his teammate a yard of space and then passes it. I think that Basuma in midfield, I've looked him up, he's 24 years of age, I think he's absolutely class. And if United don't go for him, I'm pretty sure next season, uh, Brighton will receive an offer that they can't refuse from some club or another. And I'd like that to be us. I think he's an absolutely quality player. Uh, looking at the, the games tomorrow oh one other game I meant to look at the uh, Bay Bayern Dortmund game but I got engrossed in what even it wasn't a great game I got engrossed in Aston Villa and Wolves it was at the same time Bayern beat Borussia Dortmund 4-2 yesterday uh, Haaland scored 2 again absolutely on fire Dortmund were 2-0 up 2-0 up and they got beat 4-2 and Lewandowski got, got a hat-trick as well I'd like to have seen a little bit of that but you can't watch everything, can you? Uh, today's games, uh, West Brom uh, versus Newcastle at midday. I'm going to speak about the bottom of the table. That's an interesting game at the bottom of the table. That's at midday on Amazon Prime. Liverpool versus Fulham. Fulham, obviously, in the bottom bottom few as well. They bottom three at the minute. That's two o'clock on Sky, Liverpool, Fulham. I fancy Fulham might nick a point there. I really do. Liverpool will probably batter them now that I've said that. But Fulham are a difficult team to beat at the minute, and Liverpool are on the worst run of form in their whole history. Uh, as you know, in home games, five defeats in a row in the league for the first time in their history. They'll probably snap out of it today and beat them. But Fulham really are a difficult uh, team to beat. Our game, uh, the Manchester derby, the big game of the day is at four thirty on Sky, and at seven fifteen on Sky. I think that'll be inter an interesting watch. I'm going to watch that as well. Spurs v Palace. If we, uh, if we happen to get beat, I think we need to be looking at Spurs over our shoulder. So we would, could do with Palace uh, doing us a little favour, uh, you know, and playing like they did against us and maybe nicking a point off Spurs as well. Uh, that's at 7.15 on Sky, so I'll be watching that one. Back to the bottom of the table. Uh, Brighton, you know, the two points, the two points that they've dropped with late goals in the last couple of games would make a massive difference to them. But Brighton are on... Brighton are on Sheffield United are bottom. I think you can forget them. But Brighton are on 20, uh, 26 points from 27 games. Newcastle are on 26 points from 26 games. And Fulham are on 23 points from 27 games. Now then, West Brom, who looked out of it, completely out of it, a very short time ago, 
are only on 17 points from 27 games. But tomorrow, as I've just said, the midday game is West Brom v Newcastle. So as we speak, as we speak, West Brom are six points behind Fulham, who are away to Liverpool, don't forget. And uh, and they're also nine points behind Newcastle, on, who are on 26, West Brom are on 17. If West Brom can win that game tomorrow, it really tightens up. That that, that those are... Uh, those four teams, for me, are the four teams who are in danger of going down. I'm really impressed with the way, with the way Brighton play. I, I don't think they will be there or thereabouts at the end. I do think Brighton will get out of it. It could. I, I'll tell you what I do think. I see him bring Danny Welbeck on as a sub regular. I think Danny Welbeck looks their sharpest striker. They are struggling to put the ball in the net, but the football that they play is superb. I'd be if I was Graham Potter, I'd be sorely tempted to start giving Danny Welbeck a run of games. I really would, um, but uh, I fancy Brighton to get out of it, and I also think Fulham. They're so difficult to beat. I mean, it's a big day tomorrow if they don't get a point at Anfield and West Brom managed to beat Newcastle. West Brom would only be three points behind them. I fear, I fear, because don't forget, two of these. If unless anybody else can get dragged, dragged back into it. Two of these four have got to go down. And if I've got to make a prediction now on which two of those four, I think Brighton are going to get out of it. I'm convinced they will. And I think Fulham might as well. I think Newcastle and West Brom, are the, well, obviously West Brom, they're the ones who are only on 17 points. But I think Newcastle might be in big danger. If they get beat tomorrow, you know, they are in a mess, Newcastle, if they get beat away to West Brom tomorrow. So I might have a look at that one as well. I'll be all footballed out by the end of the weekend. Uh, Chelsea and Everton's not till Monday night. That's a must-watch game because they're both uh, not far behind us in the table. That's that. It's a massive game this afternoon. I'd love to take a point. I, I, I would just call it a draw now if you want to call it a draw. I really would. If you've enjoyed that little show, um, please tell all your friends. Please subscribe. If you didn't enjoy it, don't tell anybody. Keep stum. Yeah.